Can you all hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Can you all hear me, please? Just let indicate if you can hear me. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, you can. Okay. All the Billahi min al Shaitan al Rajim, Smillah al Rahman al Rahim, Alhamdulillah al Pil Alameen, was Salatu was Salamu ala Ashraf al Ambiya al Muslim, wa ala Halebait hip Tajibin at Tahirin, Lahuma Sfalla ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Thank you again for joining us for the second and the last session of this course on Dua number six from Saifa Sajadiya. As you can see from the uh, title of the course that we are just reviewing this dua. It's a beautiful dua. If we were to just go into tafsir of this dua, I can assure you even 10 majalis, 10 lectures would not be enough. There is so much Imam has said in this dua, subhanAllah. We'll just have a quick review of this dua to be able to appreciate that what we have. Remember what I said last week, that as we were born as kids and as we start growing up, started having the understanding of things around us when we had the shur senses around us you know, to realize the day and night has always been with us so we don't really know how to appreciate that thing it's not something which we which came to us later on or which was not there and we worked hard to achieve it was just there we grew up with day and night so we don't realize what 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 kind of niamat is there but Imam, through this dua, is really making us realize and aware that you know, this is a great name of Allah. Asma. So going to the passage number six, without much uh, going again back to the previous passages, because we need to cover a lot. And immediately after this, I'm attending a workshop, so I would not even stay beyond 12. And that's why we'll continue. So Allah, Imam says in the passage number six, وَخَلَقَ لَهُمُ النَّهَارُ مُبْسَنْ لِيَبْتَغُوا فِي مِنْ فَضْلِي Allah created for them a daytime, which is bright, full of light, right? So that they seek the you know, bounty of Allah. The yaptahu min fadli. This word fadl appears in Quran often. And keep in mind, fadl is something beyond what, what actually is basic, right? A person needs basic, for example, to survive. Fadl is even more than that. Or fadl could also mean that besides what Allah has assigned for you as your risk, you know, if you work hard, there is even more than that, right? That's why Imam Ali says that risk is two kinds of risk. Right? One is tali, one is matlu. There's a risk which is, you know, is just meant for you, but there's another risk which you have to go and seek. So Imam says that you go and try to just seek from his fadl, from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the same word Imam Allah uses in Nusra Juma. He says, وَإِذَا قُدِيَةَ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ When the prayers of Friday are over, then Allah says, just spread out on the earth. وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And try to just seek from the bounty of Allah SWT. So you can see Imam is saying that this day has been made bright for us. Mufsiram, right? Which, is, which has a light so that we go far and wide deep into the earth, high onto the, no, everywhere, to try to seek. This shows that the sustenance, the rizq is there. But sometimes we have to seek for it. No, it will just not come to you. As we say, talib and matloob, that one is, the risk is looking after you, that will come to you. But there's certain risk, you also have to look for it, right? And then this Imam Khalil says, find the means of his provision. No? So that you try to find the means of provision and roam freely in this earth. No, Because the light is there, it removes that one biggest you know, hurdle. Because if there is no light, if there is darkness, there's the biggest hurdle. Remember I told you last week that even at night, for example, when all these lights are there, street lights are there, torches are there, even then with those you know, equipments, we will not be able to see everything what we see in the daytime, right? Because the brightness of day is on its own a special thing, right? So it says, so that you go and roam around freely, searching for that which is to attain. But the interesting things Imam says, you know, what you need immediately in this world, you go and try to find. But the interesting thing is that, of course, we need in this world our risk, right, to support ourselves and our family. So we try to seek it on this. But then Imam says, and not only that, even in trying to seek something, you know, 
of a deferred. Agile is to defer, not immediately. It's the opposite of agile. Now you can see this bit of Arabic, right? Agile with ayn means immediate. Agile with alif means something which comes later on, deferred, right? For the hereafter, fi ukhram, for the hereafter. And also I put a question, right, last week, that how can we, in fact, get provision for the hereafter in the bright day, right? And some of you did answer. Remember we said that as you work hard, every time when you work hard, for example, when you go out and work, right, and give yourself, say, okay, a target, that whatever I'm going to make, 5%, 10%, 12%, 15%, I'm going to keep aside just for charity work, just to help others, right? It is important that you do that. I know many people who are big businessmen, and sometimes uh, when I befriend them, when, for example, they're close to us, I ask them, they tell us the secret of your success. And they say that the secret of our success is that we have made the 12th Imam, Imam Sabah Faraja, as a partner. And I tell them why. They say two reasons. Listen to this thing, subhanAllah. There's two reasons. One is that if we make Imam as a partner in our business, then we would not dare to do something which is haram. Because then Imam is a partner. No, we are making Imam an accomplice in, in doing something haram. And the second thing is that you no, know, we also be Imam. Once we earn something, when we make a profit, we give certain amount to Imam. Because we are a partner, this is your profit, right? In that case, what happens that then we use those amounts for tabligh. For good work, you see. So this is it. You can see, Imam says, "Wadarakul ajili fi ukhram." Subhanallah. Then we go to the next slide. Passage number seven. Imam said, "Through all of this, he sets right their situation, tries the records, and watches their state in the times of for obeying him." Now, keep in mind that as you progress in your life, right? As you, for example, do things, Allah says, Imam Khalil says, بِكُلِّ ذَلِكَ يُسْلِهُ شَعَنُهُمْ no, That he says, right your situation. So Allah is making things easier for you. He's just doing Islam for you, right? وَيَبْلُوا أَخْبَارُهُمْ But at the same time, he also tries, you no, know, tries, tries the records. Keep in mind that, you no, know, we are being tried at every stage. Sometimes you go out and work, You'll find it easier, right? Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you find that you struggle a lot, whether at work or for your business or certain things. So yes, this trial is part of it, right? Plain says the trials are caused, and what is the state in the times of obeying him? That of course, Subhanallah, Imam doesn't need to say because everything is within Allah, right? As Allah says in Quran, Tabarak al-Ladi biyadhi mulk no. The entire kingdom, the entire sovereignty is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way, for example, you keep something in your palm and then you just play around, right? For example, nowadays, one of the comfort people all the time have all the phone is because within their palm. They can just do it and check, right? So the way the, I, the, the way cell phone is within your palm and you're playing around, the entire universe, the entire sovereignty is in the hands of Allah. So, Tabarakallazi, biyadihil mulk, right? Which is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he doesn't, but Imam says just to draw our attention. He says that he you know, watches the state in the times of obeying him, the vestations of his obligations, and the places of ordinances. That when it comes to awkati ta'ati, umanazila furudi, umawaki ahkami, that means all these are different words, no, whether ta'a or furuda or ahkam, no, that means all these obligations, no, for ziyat, as we say in Urdus, right? In all these cases, whatever wajibat we are doing, mustabat doing, our duties towards our family, our duties to our neighbors, our duty towards our community, at every this, this thing, Allah is watching, keeping a watch on it, right, clearly. And then he says, having done that, right, after that once he watches us and sees how we are faring, subhanAllah, this is the beauty, right? Remember I told you that you know, there is a lot of psychology also. So Imam knows that, you know, for example, if we are being told, that Allah is watching everything, then you sometimes get worried that, wow, if Allah is watching every moment of my life, everything, how can I proceed? No, I cannot because maybe I'm making mistakes. Maybe I'm disobeying him. Then he will be angry. Then I'm making Allah angry at everything. Should I do it or not? No. In fact, Imam says that this watching is not only to punish you. No, on the contrary. Allah watches you not only to punish you. On the contrary, he says, Right? Of course, he says, 
that is going to repay those who do evil with what they have done. But at the same time, he says, وَيَزْيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى But those who do good, Allah is in fact going to also give us good, right? He's going to repay the good with the goodness. And of course, when Allah gives good in the, in the place of goodness, that will be far more than we can even imagine, right? Because he's the most what, uh, resourceful, he's the most generous, he's the most noble, he's kareem, he's rahim, he's merciful, right? All those qualities Allah have, which a giver should have more than that, to the maximum, right? So when he gives, he gives a lot more than what we do. Our effort should just be to do good things, right? We go to the next slide. The Imam says, Allahumma falak alhamdu ala ma falakta lana min al-asbai mata'atana bi min da'udaw in nahar, right? Oh Allah, praise belongs to you for the sky you split into dawn, right? See, subhanallah, Imam is now telling us it's not just that the day comes from night, no. Actually, you'll find those of us if you're morning one day, if you just go out and watch, I remember there was a time that we were trying to prepare uh, Namaz timetable, so we used to go to the beach. I was in Florida, then we used to go to Daytona. We would actually drive all the way early in the morning, around 4, 4.30, we leave home. We'll go to the beach, Daytona beach, and be there at the time of Fajr, right? And subhanAllah, try this thing out, right? Try to look at it. You'll find that how, you know, in fact, the light pierces through the darkness gradually, right? So you can say, Ma fatal an asba, you know, how you just split you know, into dawn. That means this darkness, you split and brought the dawn, right? Down, right? You can see Imam is aware of that, right? Matanabhi in doing now. And then let me just enjoy the brightness of the daytime. This is this thing, right? That now we realize it that how bad it is, right? We don't realize it's because it is coming naturally, but somebody, for example, who stays in dark for long, for example, those who are in the no, on the north or south pole, right? When the days are long, when the nights are long, when the nights are over, they are so happy that, okay, now the long night is over, the day is coming, right? So you can see to enjoy us. And then Imam says, not only that, right? And showing us the sought after nourishment. Right? Kut, kut is provision, food, right? The meals. Akwat is a spurer, you know? So you just make us see, you know, all the kind of provision we have got, you know? What kind of food do we like, you know? What kind of plants should I grow? If I go, for example, and try to uh, just fetch some fruits, right? Go and pick up some fruits or vegetables. What do you like? What do you not like? All these things become very clear because of the daylight, right? And not only that, as we are busy, you know, going out to seek our provision, traveling, right? Because of the you know, bright day, you also protect us, right? You protect us from the seeking of the all kind of, you know, afar. That means blights or any kind of accidents or calamities. You protect us because we can easily see that. Do you see this? How Imam is appreciating the day time, which we hardly even think about doing it, right? Next slide. Then Imam says, Asbahna, wasbat al ashia wa kulluha, bi jumlatiha, laka, samauha wa arduha. Subhanallah, so you can see what Imam says. Asbahna, that means I just started my morning. No? For example, the Arab would say, Kayfa asbata, how did you wake up? How did you start your morning? No? Asbahna, that means you know, I started my day with, you know, with peace, right? So, Asbahna, Imam says, we, all of us, Started our morning, kulluha, and everything also with us also started their morning. All of them, you no, know, all of them in, in, in all of them together, right? Jumlatia, laka samauha wardia, no. All of these things we just have horizon for you for laka. The have you not, know. so you can see everybody as he wakes up. Is waking up under Allah, right? We are doing it for the sake of Allah. This is interesting. That not for the, and then he says, "This and you have scattered in each the still and the moving, the resident and the journey. What towers up in the air and what hides under them? 
That means once you wake up in the morning, you find people moving here and there, right? If you, for example, live near a big highway, you'll see people are crazy just running around there, right? Or for example, if you are near a place where everybody is going towards the bus station, you're near Finch, and still if you are there, for example, you find out people are busy just you know, going towards their work. So Imam says that all this, no? وَمَا بَسَّتَ فِي كُلِّ وَاحِدِ مِنْهُمَا سَاكِنُهُ وَمُتَحَرِّكُهُ وَمُكِيمُهُ وَشَاخِسُهُ no, all this, whether they are riding or sitting or driving or moving, all those things, right? Scattered, you no, know, whatever towers up in the air and whatever hides on the ground, for example, some of the birds are towering up, some of the some of the insects, for example, go hide. All these things are doing, you no, know, you no, know, we can see for laka for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that means in other words, it is Allah's system which allows us to do this thing. You know? You could stop that thing. Honestly, that all you find that movements going right in the earth, Allah has the ability. The way you put off the light or you take the remote, for example, and stop the television, Allah subhanAllah has the ability that he could stop that thing suddenly. But that doesn't happen, no. It goes so smoothly that unfortunately so smooth that we forget Allah. Remember I said last week, that now, for example, you find the newscaster talking about weather, everything, right? But he would never mention about God at all, right? Because otherwise he or she would lose the job, right? Because just now we are in a society which is totally, you know, materialistic and, uh, you know, against spirituality, right? They don't want to talk about this thing. So they, they, they discount Allah in every this thing. But no, Allah can easily stop this thing. The fact that Imam says, for you, you know, this waking up and this moving everything is for you. That means according to your, your, your command and because you allowed that thing, right? The next passage, Imam says, Asbahana fi qabdatika, no? Yahvina mulkika wa sultanuka. Ya Allah, we did not only wake up for you, right? Asbahana laka. But we have woken up we start, rise in the morning in your grasp, in your cup, in the, you know, in the control of Allah. Remember, I told you that the entire kingdom is in the just in the in the palm of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So He says, "Asbana fi qabdika, yahvina mulka ka sultanaka," and it is your mulk, it is your kingdom, it is your authority which has actually you no know, containers. His holiness, no, it is, we are in your totally you no know, kingdom. So this is important that you know, sometimes, for example, as at, at night you went to sleep, you plan for the next day. So now, alhamdulillah, whatever you plan early in the morning or last night for the next day, and you find one second thing going as you had planned, no? Don't for a moment think that, no, this is going because of your planning or because of your efforts. No, Allah has allowed that to happen. Who are we? Not at all, right? So thank Allah, as for example, even if you make a list of to-do list, for example, for the tomorrow, and you start ticking one, two, three. No, don't tick without saying, Alhamdulillah, this is done. Second, Alhamdulillah, this is done. Alhamdulillah. Don't forget about that thing, because you can see Imam is telling us that we are you know, in your, in fact, you know, authority, under your authority, under your sultan. And then Imam says, no, not only that, right? Your kingdom, which contains us, you will embrace us. No, but the Dumuna Mashiach. No, your will embraces. Is the Mashiach of Allah? Is the will of Allah which embraces us, right? And not only that, we move about by your command and turn this way and that through your you no know, governing. So not only that that we move. You can see even that you're left. That means, you know, we. I always say this to my students, Madrasa. That imagine how much. Islam teaches us to be good, very person. That we should be away about Allah's power there. Said so as we wake, stand up in namaz, we say, "Bihaulillahi wa kuwatihi akumu wa akod." Right? And it's also Muslim to say, "Arkawastu." That means, with the power and strength of Allah, akumu, I rise, akud, and I sit. And right, if you say "Arkawastu," then I do ruku and sajda. Because there are four state namaz. One is standing, there is sitting, there is ruku, and there is sajda, right? So all those state, all those different state I am in namaz, 
I do with the strength and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam says that this is gawan, it is your governing, no, with fit of lyrica. My my moving also, turning right, left, no, all those things is takdir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't realize it, no, because it is so natural, right? It's just happening. We think that it is, we don't realize. Just go to a hospital or just now look at, for example, some old person who has difficulty in moving, right? I've seen with my own eyes that there are people who are so sick for them to move only a few steps from their bed to just, not even the washroom is far, just few steps, it takes them 10, 12 minutes, right? Which we just perform in a fraction of a minute or in a few seconds, right? So you can see Imam is drawing att attention to this thing that never even for a moment as you start the day, it's a bright day, it's a beautiful day, it's a sunny day, you plan to go with your work and, and you are progressing in your work, you could, you could get your ride, you can go to your bus, you, you reach your office, all those things. These are, although coming to you so naturally, because you've been doing it every time, but this is the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam says, don't all look that. Anytime anything could have happened and everything will come to stand still, right? But that's not the case, see. So it says that clearly it says what is the mashiat of Allah, right? And it is your tadbir, it is your governing which is you know, allowing us to do this thing. In the next passage, number 11, Imam says, Laislana min al amri illa ma qadayta, subhanallah. Do you see? No, wala min al khairi illa ma atayta. See what Imam says. Just a small line, right? One line passage, but subhanallah, Imam clearly mentions the, that how much we are under the control of Allah, how much little we have on with us. He says, Laysa lana min al amri illa ma We own nothing. There is nothing of our, at our disposal except that what you have decided, right? Except that what you have decreed. Illa ma qadayta. Laysa amri. Amri is a fear. We have no affair in our own life. Forget about others. I don't have any power about you. No, forget about you. Even my own life. I don't have any kind of power. Illa ma qadayta, except what Allah has decreed, because we are talking to Allah directly, so except what you decree, right? Wala min al khairi illa ma atayta. Any good we say every day, for example, in the mouth, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, of Allah hasana, Allah give us good in this world hereafter. So he says, Wala min al khairi illa ma atayta. Whatever good which I have or which, which is with me is on account of what you have given me, Ya Allah. Is Allah's atiyah, is Allah's giving. Is Allah's granting which is there with us. Do you see? So, subhanAllah, how does Imam you know, draw attention that O oh, Insan, O oh, Banda, never for a moment think that you are independent? Not at all. We are totally under Allah's control. It's only that He has just allowed us to enjoy all this nemat and continue, right? So, there's another, uh, there's a dua after Zuhur, which by, you'll find that this line appears there, right? It says, Allahumma ma bina min ni'matin faminka. Oh Allah, every blessing that we have is from none but you. Ma bina. We do not have. Illa faminka. Whatever kind of ni'mat, blessing. Allahumma ma bina. Allahumma. We do not have. What we have, we do not have. Min ni'mati minka, right? So this is, whatever we have is from you. La ilaha illa anta. There is no God except you. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. And I seek forgiveness and turn towards you. In other words, subhanAllah, see the beauty of this is that after realizing that every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realize there's only one God, right? And then I say, astaghfiruka. In case for a moment or some kind of thoughts occurred in my mind, think that I was the one who's responsible, it's my smartness, it's my efforts, it's my doing. If that kind of thought occurred in my mind, so I seek forgiveness for it. And then what to relay, and I turn back to you. Do you see? So beautiful line to be recited, especially after Zohar, that means the middle of the day, right? As you are in the middle of the day and you continue to lie. No? We go to the next slide, number 12, right? Passage number 12, Imam says, Wahata yawmun hadisun jadidun. This is a fresh new day, right? 
keep in mind every day is a new day it's very important now don't think that no no it's just 13th of april no it's a new day right 13th of april 2019 is a new day which will never come again right so haza yawmun hadisun jadidun huwa alayna shahidun atidun subhanallah See what Imam says, that this is a new day and a fresh day, and then it is a witness over us already. No, that means everything we do, this day is going to complain that, oh, Hasnain, on April 13th, you did so and so things which was wrong, right? This same day, which I appreciate, which I enjoy, it's a beautiful day, sunny day, right? But if I do wrong, that day is going to complain. So you say, no, wa huwa alayna. Alayna is useful. But we say, addua lahun, that means pray for us. Addua alay, that means dua against him. He's saying in Urdu or Gujarati, but dua, right? So alayna is that this is going to be witness against us. Against us when? When I do something wrong, of course, right? So wa huwa alayna shahidun atidun. It's just ready, right? In ahsanna wa da'ana bihamdin. Wa in asana right? He says that in Ahsanna Wadda'ana Bihamdi, right? That if we were to do something good, right, then it's going to Wadda'ana Bihamdi, is going to, the day is going to live praising you. That Subhanallah, oh Ali, oh Fatima, oh Mehdi, that you have passed your day well today, the day is going to praise you because the day has been witnessed. And then he says, in Ahsanna, if you do good things, Wadda'ana, that means to depart, to know. Vida, right? We say Vida, for example, same same root word. But da'ana bihamdin. It will leave you with hamd and praise. So you see this thing, as you finish the day, the same day is praising. And of course, Allah is recording. But da'ana bihamdin. When asana, faraktana bizammin. On the other hand, Imam says, subhanallah, that if we were to perform bad deed, then in fact, this day is going to blame us, right? Is going to, you know, just uh, taunt us. You know that what is done, you no, know, with them, you know, is going to leave us. With that what kind, what a kind of day this thing. This person has made this day such a bad day, right? So keep this in mind. And this kind of awareness which Mom is bringing into us, that you, as day passes by, we are responsible and make sure that to make the day good, right? Let me share with you a hadith, you know, which is found in Amal of Sheikh Saduq. I mean, Islam says a beautiful hadith. Now, this is the hadith which our teachers taught us long ago, which has really helped us shape your life. No, see what Imam says: "Ma min yomun, ma min yomin yamuru ala ibn Adam illa kana lahu zadi kal yom." Subhanallah. It's also beautiful if you understand the language. Imam says that not a single day passes in the life of a human being, Banu Adam, illa kana lahu zadi kal yom, except that that day talks to you that this day is telling you 13th of april saturday will talk to you to do yabn adam or son of adam ana yawmun jadid right i am a new day wana alayka shaheed and i am a witness over you fakul fiya khayran wa amal fiya khayra so say good things in me and perform good deeds in me right ashhadu laka bi yawm al qiyamah because i'm going to be a witness against you on the day of judgment because you are not going to see me again after this at all until the day of judgment. 13th April, Saturday 2019, will never come back in the life, right? This day will not come back. It will, in fact, not, we'll see this day again on the day of judgment, whereby it's going to either complain against us or give witness in our, in our favor. So do you see how much Imam is you know, drawing attention as we pass the day, and, and, and through dua, of course, Imam, if you can imagine, if we were to recite this dua twice a day, as Imam used to do it, no? And understandingly, whole our, our awareness will change, right? Our life will change, you know? Our day will change because we will no longer waste our time, nor, for example, do anything which will, you know, which will displease Allah, right? The next passage, passage 13. Imam begins by, Allahumma, Right? So often Imam begins the passages within the Sahifa with Salawat, no? invoking the divine blessings on Prophet and his household. 
And I counted this thing. In fact, I also have the count for each dua. In the first 54 dua of Saifa, Imam has used Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa 209 times. This is within the dua. We are not talking, for example, a dua begins with Bismillah and Salawat. There is an etiquette of dua, right? Even if it's not printed, that you'll recite. But no, within the dua, within the, within the body of the dua, Imam has used 209 times. It's a discussion on its own, which inshallah, when you get the fiqh, we'll try to discuss them. For Zukna, Husna, Musahabati. For Allah, provide us with a day's good companionship, right? Husna, Musahabati could be to have a good companions for even the hours of the day. The time of the day should be like a good companion. You know? A person who is a good companion will be helpful, will make your day bright and cheerful, right? So let every hour of the day pass by making it cheerful, right? Husna musahibat, we can see. Wasimna min suy mufarikate, no? Bertikabi jayirate. And Allah protect us, no? preserve us against parting from it by bad, 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 by doing a mis, misdeed, right? I don't want, for example, that the day passes by because of my misdeeds or because of something wrong, it passes me in that kind of record, right? You know, with, with misdeeds, no? Or iktirafi sahirat al-kasiyat, right? Or in fact, Imam, Imam says that it's not only that bad misdeeds or committing a sin, whether small or great. Or iktirafi sahirat al-kasiyat, no? A person commits a sin, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether the sister whether it's small or big. Because we have this tendency, this is a big sin, the small sin. No. Or 11th Imam, Imam Asaskari Sawatullah has a beautiful hadith. Whereby Imam says that don't look at the sin, whether it is big or small. Look against whom you are disobeying, right? So Imam says, that I should let the day not pass by by me having committed a major or a minor sin. Subhanallah. As I said earlier, that when you read this dua day and night, twice times, twice a day, and then understanding it, I guarantee you, honestly, I guarantee you that your outlook of the life will be different. Your whole perspective will change. Because then you realize that no, this is a serious day which has come. Let me share with you a hadith from the sixth Imam. You know, this is also one of the hadiths which our teachers taught all right early as we arrived in the Hausa. In the first few months, some of the hadiths taught to us are still within properly, they have been imprinted in our minds, you know, and they have helped us make our life, right? See what Imam says. When is Yamahu Right? He who makes his two days equal is of the deceased. He whose current day is better than yesterday. No? Khayran min amsi, right? That means on the day which you are, that means today. If that is better than ams yesterday, no, then of course. That better than yesterday, that which has passed him, is fortunate, right? And is an enviable person, right? Otherwise, you are lost, right? So you are an enviable person that as you pass your days, you are progressing. So if you start a new day, compare with yesterday. How can I make this day better than yesterday? Do you see? This is some of the beautiful the hadiths which imams have taught us that which require, which show that the progress in life has to continue every day, not only once a year or once a month. Pest number 14. Imam says, and make our good deeds within it plentiful. Right? That this good, not only that we should do good, but we should be plentiful. Brothers and sisters, see how continuously you can just do good deeds. Try always, you know. The moment whatever your duties are there, I remember I went to uh, see a, a, a Mormon brother in 1970s, I think, at his work. So he told me that come and see me at my office around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So I went there at 11 o'clock and 
I saw him that he was sitting, doing other things, talking to different Malims, calling them, doing everything. So I told him that, uh, Uncle, you don't have other work. He said, I came here on time, early. I finished all my work. You can see my, my desk is clear. Now, you know, I have this time whereby I can do other things. You know? So I'm not even taking company's work because all the work which is supposed to be done are cleared. Right? You can see that nobody's doing any, any more work on my desk because I was there on time and just got it done. Right, So you can see that make our goods this within it plentiful. You know? And then Imam says, empty us therein of evil. No, just wakhlina fi mina said, wakhlina no khalas, no khalas, right? Wakhlina fi mina sayyad, just empty us, you know, from the evil things, right? And then Imam Subhanallah says, and fill what lies between its two sides for us with praise and thanksgiving. Wamla ma bayna tarfayhi hamdan wa shukran, wa ajran wa zukran, wa fadlan wa ihsanan. Subhanallah, again, beautiful lines, only if you were to appreciate the wordings. It says, Wamla, amla, that means fill, right? Imla. Wamla alana ma bayna tarfayhi. That means between the two ends of the day. Fill this, this day with what? Hamdan with praise. Shukran, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ajran, right? Is just being what, uh, being, being paid for your efforts, for zukran and stores of you know, your good deeds, or you know, for fadlan and bounty of Allah, for hasan and beneficent. Do you see that fill our days between the these two ends? It should be just either, you know, you can see that there is you no know, praise, you no, know, whether I praise Allah or the day praises me on account of good things. Shukran and thank Allah, and not only thank Allah, thank even the creature for the help, right? For ajran, and of course, because I worked hard, so oh Allah, give me the reward for that, ajr for that. For zukran, it is because I get I worked so hard and I get so much reward, let it be stored, right? Because you never know it can be of help. For zukran, let it be stored. For fadlan, and now not only that, because I've been working hard, oh Allah, give me not only from my basic needs, as I said. But from the grace of Allah, Fadal, my son, and from the beneficence. Do you see a beautiful dua, short lines, but they mean so much, right? There's a hadith which are included here. Now, in another dua, for example, this is the dua I said, grant me good of the world and the good of the hereafter, right? That befits me, you. Remove from me the evil of the world and the evil of the hereafter. That we feel, right? This is uh, this is actually a dua uh, which uh, we read. Those of uh, are blessed you know, to read the uh, Tahajjud Salat. There's a beautiful dua to be recited in Sajda, especially if you have pain in some kind of the body. Then there's a short dua which Imam has taught us. You recite, you no, know, and then put your hand in the place where you have pain. Inshallah, it will help you go away, right? So within that dua, the short dua, we say, Wa'atini. من خير الدنيا والآخرة ما أنت هلو right وصرف أني من شر الدنيا والآخرة ما أنت هلو grant me the good of the world and the good of the hereafter that befits you what befits Allah سبحانه وتعالى no وصرف أني شر الدنيا والآخرة ما أنت هلو and just remove from us the evil of the world and the hereafter that befits you no within the you know you can see what befits Allah سبحانه وتعالى so we live on Allah to make a judgment, right? When it comes to giving us good and keeping us away from evil. But again, it's a beautiful line of du'as. This is what Imams have taught us, you know, so beautiful. We go to the next passage, you no, know, 15. Allahumma yassir ala kiramil katibaini ma'unatana, subhanallah. You know, when I read this thing, it was so amazing, you know. What see what Imam says? Oh Allah, ease our burden on the noble writers. You know we have those angels who are writing our records. Now we know the right and left, right? But here Imam uses what Kiram al Katibin, noble writers. He didn't say Kiram al Katibain. Those who know Arabic, he doesn't use the dual form. He uses the plural form. So besides the angel on the right and left. There are also other angels with you, keep in mind, who are recording, who are seeing everything, right? On account of good deeds you perform, right? So Imam says, Allahumma yassir al-kiram al-katibina ma'unatana. No? 
make it easier for them our burden right so you can see subhanallah why this imam say burden the work is to write right whether i do bad the right of his name did bad if i do good it's okay he has done good right but when he writes bad it's a burdensome because the angels who are with you all the time expect you to behave well right to do good things but when you do bad they are burdened why because they would not like to record against you but it is their duty so you are burdening them to do that thing right this happens that for example sometimes you do certain things that you're not supposed to do it but then let's say for example that you know your employer is your friend the employer is your relative right and then when you go to work late or when you don't complete your work then one day he or she has to complain against you right and one day later on if that complaint continues one day she or he has to write a dismissal letter, letter against you so you're burdening them do you see that you're burdening your relative you're burdening your employer who otherwise loves you or related to you is a friend of yours but because of your actions so see what imam says allahumma yasri ala kirami lakatibina maunatana wamla alana min hasanatina wa sahaifina no? that in fact fill our you no know, our pages with good deeds let them write all the good record right that they are also proud they're happy to write you no know, that way as the as this record is going to us is full of good records right subhanallah wala wala tuksina indahum bisu ya amalina do not degrade us do not humiliate us before them on account of evil work because these angels are with you all the time when we do bad thing we are actually humiliating them because they say we are in the company of people who are so bad and evil do you see subhanallah where is imam reach no where is imam sees the imam thought process no he looks at the day and all the ni'mat he does not miss out anything subhanallah how beautiful no imam uh, captures this thing the duas passage number 16 imam says allahumma ij'al lana fi kulli sa'atin min sa'atihi hazzan min ibadika right O oh Allah, a point for us in each of the days hours, a share from your servant, you know, from your servants. So, I mean, Ibad, so there are servants of Allah whom Allah would like to give. O oh Allah, make sure that we are those servants that in every hour we receive something from you as, as your servants, right? So because we are servants of Allah and Allah is our master, he's supposed to take care of us. He's supposed to provide us. He's supposed to protect us. He's supposed to know and, and what uh, embrace us with mercy because he's our master we are servants so we are saying that oh allah in every hour that should happen let me not do certain things that your mercy and your grace and your rahma goes away from me that should be the case right so now on a seven min shukrika and not only that and also a portion of giving thanks brothers and sisters never forget as i told you that as you tick for example i've done this thing say alhamdulillah never just stick and forgetting that no praise be to allah right so also nasiban shukrika every hour the concept should be there of thanking allah subhanahu in any way you can do that right wa shahida sidkin min malaikatika and let a truthful witness among the angels know that no when i perform this that the angels you know actually record right they they make you know the angels they be truthful in their in their witness on this on our behalf right so such that you know god he is ever thankful to the creator said that the angels will be truthful witness on his birth right that as we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time even the angels will then give a witness which is truthful that this person what he or she did right question number 17 as we said earlier right imam uses salawat often and there is a reason for that right allahumma sallam salli ala muhammad wa ali right o oh allah bless muhammad and his household right fahfazna min bayni aydina 
ومن خلفنا وعن ايماننا وعن شمائلنا وجميع ومن جميع نواحينا حفظا عاصما من معصيته او الله سيف جاد اس what is before us what is behind us what is on our right and what is on our left right and from all directions do you see so imam does not leave out anything but we want the hifz of allah we want the protection of allah we want the security of allah from all the aspects i might have shared this thing i don't know but remember i said that even when you open the curtain in the morning just don't open the curtain pray to allah oh allah i open the curtain i pray to you to grant me the sunlight protect the privacy of my home and all the benefits which are there in the sunlight give me that thing right so keep in mind the iman says from all the sides right left no the protection is there right from what no nawahina hifzan wa asim right that we right from all the nations safeguarding that will preserve no asiman in masiyati such a kind of safeguarding you should preserve from your disobedience subhanallah we talk of safeguarding just security right but here imam is saying no even safeguard let the angels help me let allah help us from staying away from disobeying no so that kind of hifz no a protection against disobeying hadian ila taatik no having a guide towards obeying you right hadian that mustaminan li mahabbataka and i just employ i use my day in something which you love right subhanallah ask this question what will allah love as i progress no when you finish this thing immediately just pause and say what should i do next what would make allah happy no is important see so how imam is saying that no from right left all the sides let me be protected from what committing sins because shaitan comes sometimes from the right sometimes from the left sometimes from the top, bottom sometimes from the up what imam is trying to say the shaitan will try to use all the means come to you in different kind of you no know, ways and tempt you in different ways pray to allah that we are protected throughout from all our sides right Question number eighteen. Beautiful again, right? See this thing. Allahumma salla Muhammadin wa ali. Wa fikna fi yomi na hada. No, wa ilat wa ilat wa ilatina hadi fi jamin ayamina. No, listimali khayr, right? O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and his household, right? Again, you can see within this. Uh, as we started the class today, from passage number seven onwards, we eighteen. already three times salawat is come this shows how important it is right that we have this kind of what uh, we pray we do salawat all the time because there's benefit right then imam says wa fikna fi wa fikna fi yawmin hadha wallah ki was success tawfiq the day of ours the night of ours right li istimali al khair that we employ to do good things use your time day and night no employ it for good istimal khair wajrani ash-sharri right and to stay away from the evil zan shur and then imam says wa shukran ni'ma and use your time to thank for the ni'ma and ni'ma that means the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so three main things one is doing good one is staying away from bad right and then thank allah for all the nemat no if you do thank at every stage then allah has promised in quran wala in shakartum la azidannakum sometimes people say that no we start the day so well but then it ends so badly right you must have experienced this thing that you started the day well you planned so well some things maybe you forgot to thank allah as you are doing well and as you are progressing in the day don't forget to thank allah If you do that, Allah has promised that no, He is going to even give you more, right? So don't all look that thing. You can see part of it. it clearly says that oh Allah, let my day and night be used, employed for doing good, staying away, and thanking. But tiba is sunani, and then Imam also saying what to just 
follow the sunan. What is sunan? Here sunan means the practice of Rasulullah, right? It is very important that as we start that they ask, what would Prophet do? There's a beautiful book, which is also available online. Let me just write you for you what uh, uh, the title is known as Sunan an Nabi. Sunan an Nabi. This has been compiled by Allah Matabai, the one who has compiled Tafsil Mizan. He has compiled this. What he has done, he has taken all the hadiths regarding which talks about Prophet's life. How did Prophet stand up? How did he rise? How did he sleep? How did he pray? What did he drink? What did he wear? He has collected those things in 22 chapters and thus arranged the hadiths according to you know, topical, thematically. You know, he arranged the hadiths thematically on the Prophet's life, right? I feel this book is so important, it should be in our living room. So that from sometimes when you, when you are there sitting in the living room or the guests come, let them look at it. And let's try to follow those things, right? So Imam says clearly, but Tibai Sunan, that no follows Sunan. Mujanibatit al bid'ah. And stay away, avoid all kind of bid'ah. Things which are innovations. We bring into religion things which were not there. And they consider that as religious, you know. They are not part of religion. No? Don't call them religion. Don't try to justify, you know. So try to stay away from innovations, right? Well, Amri bil ma'rufi wa nahi anil munkari. And enjoy the good and stay away and disdain you know, or prevent the evil. So it is important that we try to enjoy good behavior. Not only that only you do it. Make sure your children do it. Make sure that your friends stay away from bad things. Sometimes we find people doing wrong things and we say this is none of our business. Of course, we need to correct it, but in a way that it should not be felt as, as insulting, right? But we need to do that. You can see Imam says, as part of the activity of the day, clearly says, Wal amru bil marufi wa nahi ani munkari. Wa hiyatatil Islam. Not only that, right? Have we been asked to, in fact, defend Islam, hayat al Islam. It's our duty. Islam is malign. Islam is getting bad name everywhere. It's our duty to protect Islam, right? And then we are told clearly. Defend Islam, but diminish falsehood, no? Wantikasi al batil no? All the kind of falsehood which is there, we try to weaken it and diminish it, and abase it, no? Clearly. Wantikasi al wa is lalihi. See if you can put down the evil, the, the batil. No, the batil which is there should not rise, you know? In fact, it should be put down, right? Clearly. And then Imam says, haqqi wa izazi. When it comes to truth, try to help the truth. Do the nusrat, no. Help the truth, wa'izazi, and not only that, exalt it, right? That the, unlike, no, as we said, that falsehood should be just abased, but no, good should be exalted, right? Philip. Ishad al dal, right? And those who have, for example, been misguided, guide them to the path. Draw their attention through madras, as a madras teacher, or sometimes you find people are doing wrong things. No, guide them. Subhanallah. Imam is talking about daily, you know. Try to see if you can help somebody who is weak, right? It's very important that we do it. right? And also at the same time to reach out to those who are troubled. So you can see there is a human aspect. There's a personal aspect and there's a religious aspect. All those things are covered within this passage. That we should be concerned about them, no? People who are weak, who are helpless, right? See what you can do to try to help out. This is the same what we discussed, just I was trying to keep put some points. Just look at it. already discussed this thing, but these are just you know, point form I was trying to put in another slide. No? We are almost ending the dua. We have about you know, three, five minutes to end. Again, question 19, Imam says, Allahumma salla Muhammad wa ali wa ayimana yawmin ahidnahu 
وفضل صاحب سيبنا هو وخير وقت ضللنا هو ضللنا في رايت هو الله فصل فو بلس محمد ان از هاوس اول اجين سلوات has some benefit the fact that imam is using again and again before dua it helps you right so imam does the thing waj'alhu ayman yawmin ahidnahu walla make it the most fortunate day we have known no which you charge us ahidnahu so the most fortunate day do you see this thing there is just no room for second endness for mediocre mediocre right there is no mediocrity there at all Imam is just trying to go for the best, you can see. That Wajalhu Aymana Yamin Ahid now. Imam could have just said, make the day fortunate. No, he says, the most fortunate of the days, you can see. That make this thing as the most fortunate day we ever known. Abdullah Sahibin Sahib now. And the most excellent companion we have accompanied. No. So you can really find that no, this hour was so good, this day was so good, this time was so good. The most excellent companion, right? Of course, we have to work hard to achieve that. Wa khayr wa khayr now, right? In the best time which we have lingered around, right? So you can see how much important it is how we are passing there. There is just no room, you know, for mediocre or substandard lifestyle for a believer. A believer will always work hard to do the best. Brothers and sisters, share this land with your, your, your children, with your nephews, with your nieces, right? When they go to school, tell them that what is expected of you is nothing but best. You know, this is what Imam was praying, you can imagine. Question number 20. Places among the most satisfied of all your speeches whom night or day have passed by. Wajalna min arda man no arda comes from riza, right? Min arda man marra alehi alehi. That means the most satisfied on which the, your, your creatures have no, might have passed by, right? And then Imam says, the most thankful of them for the favors you have done. No, subhanallah. Ashkurahum lima awlayta min na'matik. Try to do the best in thanking Allah. To the extent that no, you should be the most thankful. Right? Wa qamahum lima sharata min sharaika. And the most upright. Aqwam is to be the most upright about following the religion. Because it clearly says, wa, no, subhanallah, it says, wa shrakahum lima awlayta min na'matika. The most upright, from what you have done, for whatever wajib you have done, right? The most upright in following the Sharia, from the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Imam is saying, not only most upright, but also in the most yielding, unyielding of them towards prohibited as against what you have done, no? Whatever you made haram, I should be the most you know, unyielding. That means I don't give it into haram thing. When it comes to haram, there is no compromise. It's unyielding, right? I will just say no. That, for example, you are amongst the friends and they decided to bring certain food which is doubtful. Say, no, sorry, I'll stay away from it. Not by the company of friends and try to justify, oh, this is just a friend company. After all, he's a Muslim. He must have done some kind of homework. Baba, you can see it, it's written from which companies. Name is there, right? Why do we take the chance? Why are you trying to just fool yourself and doing this thing? So Imam says, no, that we should be the most, in fact, no, most unyielding of no, of them towards the prohibited and against which you have cautioned, right? About, about which Allah has actually cautioned. We should try to stay away from it. Don't just take chances to do wrong things, no? It's already an hour, 12 or 2. I have to go for a workshop. I'm attending just now a workshop here in Mississauga. Actually, I'm not even conducting this class from a, you'll be surprised. I'm conducting this class from a masjid in Mississauga. You know, uh, anybody has any questions? The slides will inshallah be posted with, this, uh, with the recording.
uh, by this evening or maybe by tomorrow or maximum Monday. Any questions, any clarifications, brothers and sisters? Okay, so since we don't have any questions, this is slide number, page number 21. We still have uh, 21, 22, 23, three, four patches to go. But of course, you can just read and see. We have reviewed the dua. You can see how beautiful the dua is and how much Imam is so careful in trying to you know, cover all the aspects of the life, of the day and night. All the aspects you could even not even thought about. Imam has you know, covered that. Any any questions, any clarifications? If there are no questions, no clarifications, again, we thank you very much for being part of this uh, course. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. Please pray, especially these are the holy months of Shaban and Ramadan. Pray that we are able to continue serving uh, the cause, and especially bringing forward these beautiful duas of Saif al which is a hidden treasure, which unfortunately people are not aware that what, what lies in this great treasure of Al-Bayt. Wa salli ala Muhammad wa alihi tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.